Hey, welcome back everybody. Great to see you on this Friday. Hope we all had a wonderful Christmas week and hopefully we're getting ready for the new year as that very quickly approaches here going into this weekend and into next week. Uh, now we do have a lot to talk about in today's video including some winter weather ongoing right now in some areas that really don't see it all that often as well as some ice that we really need to be careful for in other parts of the country. Uh, now, we're also going to take a look at the long range. You know I've been talking about this winter pattern and how we could see multiple storms develop. And I think the models are really kind of starting to grab a hold of that idea for those first two weeks of January. And specifically, there's two storm systems I'm looking at right now uh, that we're going to need to talk to about uh, for that potential of some winter weather going into the next week or two. Uh, now also, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing out there on this Friday. With all that said, let's go ahead and jump on into that forecast. Now, um, starting off here, taking a look at our um, infrared satellite, you'll notice it's actually pretty quiet for most folks, especially compared to what we've seen the past couple days with all of that rain that we've been dealing with throughout much of the eastern half of the country. Right now, really just left with this upper level low continuing to spin away here, and with that, it has brought a lot of cold air on the backside, and this thing is very occluded now, just meaning uh, it is fully entrenched in that cold air as it has really wrapped all the way around and taken over that warm air, and I think a lot of you are going to notice that today. I tell you, I definitely noticed it. I left uh, my window open last night, which I regret uh, now after waking up this morning, and it was absolutely freezing in my room. So a lot of cold air really kind of locking itself in over the eastern half of the country. And as I talked about for really the past couple of videos, this is the beginning of that pattern change that I see coming for much of January. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of this cold and snowy weather uh, through much of this month and uh, probably even honestly after that going into February. Normally El Nino winters really kind of peak late January uh, and into February. So we'll see if that uh, trend stays uh, true this winter as well or if uh, things are a little different. All right, now taking a look at watches, warnings, advisories, and radar imagery. Uh, now we do actually have um, a couple of winter weather advisories and special weather statements up for some of that snow that we're going to see today for sections of the Cumberland Plateau of uh, kind of Tennessee all the way up through eastern Kentucky as well where we could see enough accumulating snowfall to cause some uh, scattered uh, roadway issues and we also could have a couple of uh, roadway issues maybe here in North Georgia where we have some uh, special weather statements out for some of that uh, wintry weather on the way this afternoon. Now we also have winter weather advisories up for northern Maine where we're already seeing some of that wintry precipitation begin and if you're watching from Maine, please let me know what you're seeing. Uh, let me know if you're seeing freezing rain, sleet, or maybe you're seeing only snow right now. Uh, I'd love to get those reports from you folks and uh, you know that really helps me kind of verify these forecasts. So uh, again, just a very active day. Some snow and rain showers in the Ohio River Valley and uh, some ice and snow up into Maine with also some back-end lake effect snow here into the interior northeast. So a much more wintry day than maybe we have had uh, the past couple of days where it's been quite warm and rainy for a lot of folks. Alrighty, let's uh, kind of time this out for you and uh, you know give you the kind of future cast, if you will, over the next couple of days. Again, as I talked about, right now we are still seeing kind of that icy, rainy, snowy mess up into Maine. The good news is that will transition hopefully to all snow by the time we get into this evening. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment as I move the map ahead in time. Uh, now, outside of there, again, we are seeing uh, scattered snow and rain showers through much of the Ohio River Valley. Uh, this model is overdoing the amount of precipitation a little bit, so kind of take this with a grain of salt, but just know the general idea of where those scattered snow showers and even kind of a shield of light snow is. All right, now as we move this into this afternoon, you'll notice again, as I talked about in Maine, what is currently falling is likely ice or rain transitions to mostly snow here for you folks. Uh, and even into kind of surrounding areas of uh, French-speaking Canada up there. Uh, also could see some of that snow as well this afternoon. So if you're watching from Canada, uh, I know I had somebody comment and uh, tell me that a lot of people watch from Canada, and I do notice that. I promise I'll talk about you guys more often. Uh, just You're going to have to give me till the new year whenever I get back to Charlotte and in and, and kind of my normal uh, studio, if you will. <laughs> uh, it'll be a lot easier for me to do it then. But again, I do read those comments, and in fact, I read all of them, even if I don't respond to all of them. Um, you know, I definitely do read them all, so you know, I do appreciate all the comments. It means a lot. Uh, back to the weather. Um, again, this afternoon, that uh, rain and ice changing to snow in Canada and uh, north, uh, northern Maine, uh, and also those snow showers continuing to break out through much of the Tennessee and Ohio River Valley, and that's why we have those uh, winter weather advisories up for a lot of folks in those areas. 
Uh, now going into this evening about the midnight hour, still dealing with these scattered snow showers and likely becoming, I'd say, a little higher in nature, especially in the higher elevations here, West Virginia and uh, North Carolina, as well as, again, the uh, Cumberland Plateau, where we also have some elevation that's going to help drive some of these snow showers. Uh, now outside of there, if you're watching kind of maybe in this section of Ohio or northern Alabama, northern Georgia, I think we could see some flakes fly this afternoon and evening. I just don't really think it'll amount to anything in terms of accumulation. Maybe you're lucky, you'll get a quick dusting. Uh, isolated spots, if they're really lucky, maybe get half an inch, but just not really any impacts out of this um, outside of those higher elevations. Now going uh, into the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, again, I, I think this is overdone a little bit precipitation wise, but just note in general, we will have enough flow off the lakes uh, that we could see some scattered snow showers and even some areas of just ongoing light snow uh, from the higher terrains of uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, up through the Virginias and uh, into sections of New York State, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Uh, again, like I said, this model's probably overdoing it a little bit. Just know that snow chances or those snow chances do continue into tomorrow afternoon before I think um, things kind of really begin to dry out going overnight Saturday into Sunday as our next storm system here approaches. And this one could bring uh, some snow to you folks up in the Great Lakes who have had a very warm past week or two uh, that return to cold air and some snow on the horizon just in time for our new year. All right, let's kind of talk about some of these snow totals here for you. And um, Again, this isn't anything off the charts that we're expecting, but if you are watching in the higher elevations of West Virginia or maybe these uh, really high peaks of these northwestern facing slopes of North Carolina and Tennessee, a couple inches of snow could fall out of this. Uh, again, especially West Virginia, those uh, higher elevations, I think one to three inches uh, is possible. Higher elevations of North Carolina, again, I mean really high, like above 5,000 feet here, uh, could be a pretty similar story. If you're watching in the Cumberland Plateau here, I think half an inch to an inch is going to be the most common thing that we see, uh, but isolated spots a little more or a little less. And now outside of there this morning, again, we do still have that snow falling through sections of St. Louis, uh, other parts of Missouri and Southern Illinois could pick up another uh, half an inch to an inch, depending on when you're watching this video, obviously that may have already fallen. Um, but again, a little bit more snow there. Now outside of there, again, through kind of central Kentucky, east Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, up into Ohio here, uh, I think you do see some flakes or at least some flurries, just likely not going to amount to much of anything at all. Uh, more of a novelty event um, for those folks. All right, talking about this ice up in Maine, again, this is something I talked about in the past couple videos that I was concerned about, and uh, sure enough, uh, I think some places could get up to... Um, uh, a tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch of ice here scattered through central Maine. So again, if you're watching a Maine, please let me know in the comments what you're seeing. Uh, you know, I'd love to know how these kind of models and uh, my forecast is verified so far. The good news though, again, we're only dealing with that ice really this morning. Hopefully that cold air can take over through the other layers of the atmosphere and keep this all snow by this afternoon where we could pick up a good uh, one to three inches of snow on the backside there into northern Maine. And again, some lake effect snow showers tomorrow kind of in these other regions. Uh, and you'll notice not a lot showing up on this map. Again, I think that model is overdoing it a little bit. But I do think most folks here in uh, the interior northeast see some flakes fly over the next 48 hours. Uh, those higher peaks of Vermont, New Hampshire, could get a couple inches. Same for uh, maybe some of those uh, higher elevations in New York State. Outside of there, though, more of a dusting to an inch uh, for most other folks. All right, that's uh, this kind of wintry system we've been talking about uh, really since Christmas now. Let's kind of switch gears because, as you know, I've been really hammering home my thought process on uh, this wintry pattern coming up, and I think the models are really starting to latch on to two storm systems. And uh, specifically, a couple days ago, I talked about that, and I think that's becoming more and more likely here. <clears throat> All right, so our latest uh, GFS model, uh, looking at our areas of troughing, ridging, uh, cold air, warm air, uh, uh, this kind of big area of blue, that's what we're seeing right now. Eventually, that moves offshore. This is um, just in time for New Year's Eve you're looking at. And then here comes our next storm system. That's kind of what we saw at the end of our first model we looked at with that snow moving through the Midwest. Uh, that likely does move through, bring some snow for you folks, and maybe even into the higher terrains of... Uh, the Appalachia chain could see some snow out of that one. But what I'm really watching for is by the time we get into later this coming week, about the Thursday time frame, look at what's setting up shop here. We've got not one, but two storms here that are taking a very favorable uh, kind of southern track here uh, with now at this point enough cold air, not a lot, but enough of it uh, from these past two kind of cold shots um, that this could lead to some snow for somebody. 
And uh, again, these two storm systems I've been talking about. I said the kind of fourth and fifth of January, and that's seventh to eighth uh, January time frame. And <clears throat> the models are really starting to kind of hint at this. So that first one moves through the southeast. That one maybe brings some snow to somebody. And then here comes a more vigorous one by the time we hit the eighth. And this is the one I'm really watching. Uh, and that one, the models have been hinting a little more that that one itself could actually ride up the coast. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely continue to watch both of these um, uh, storm systems, but just know that confidence is growing, that they will be there. Just the biggest question now is, is it going to link up with that cold air or not? Uh, now, a quick sneak peek beyond those two storm systems. This is way out there, but I think after that, we then do warm back up a little bit in the east, indicated by this kind of ridging on your map uh, with maybe some warm air pushing northward. Uh, but I think that might not necessarily be a bad thing because that's likely going to help to dump a big area of cold air out west that eventually probably tries to slide east in the long run uh, and could lead to a active middle of January. But we're really going to just focus on the next two weeks here. All right, these next two storms, what could it look like? Well, again, this uh, going into New Year's Day or so, here's that kind of clipper system that moves through uh, that could bring some snow towards the Great Lakes. And also a secondary piece of energy is going to try to form here on the southern end of that. That could bring uh, maybe some snow to the higher elevations of North Carolina, but outside of that, really just a very cold rain for a lot of folks in the southeast from Charlotte, Columbia to Atlanta, I think is looking pretty likely there going into our Monday of next week. Now, uh, after that, here comes that next uh, two storm systems. And look at this, by the time we're getting into next Wednesday, Thursday, we've got a pretty well-defined low pressure here, some cold air just to the north, and uh, we're getting some mountain snow in North Carolina out of this one on our latest GFS model, and also some snow for maybe folks of, once again, the Cumberland Plateau. Not out of the question to see some snow out of this, maybe even surrounding areas here. And, you know, with the latest GFS, by the time we're getting into uh, overnight Wednesday and into Thursday next week, look at all of this snow breaking out into sections of eastern Tennessee uh, and the western North Carolina mountains. Uh, and so that one definitely could, you know, cause some impacts. Uh, and by the time that moves out and uh, once again tries to ride up the East Coast, maybe can squeeze out some flakes here into the Northeast. Not out of the question. Again, we'll watch the uh, watch the runs and um, you know see how this um, trends. But even if that one doesn't do much for your location, here comes that next one, and this one looks even more vigorous. A lot more energy here. A lot more precipitation to work with. But unfortunately, by this point, this storm's kind of trying to push that warm air uh, northward. Uh, but you'll notice going, again, this is very far out. This is not a forecast, just, you know, something that could happen. Um, we've got a pretty strong low pressure riding up the I-95 corridor, and there could be enough cold air here in place uh, that this turns to some snow for somebody in maybe the Ohio River Valley, maybe the Northeast. Uh, you know, exact locations and totals aren't what we're looking for right now. Uh, just know that uh, the storm signal is there. Uh, European model so shows the same general idea, that clipper system going into New Year's. And then here comes Storm System 1 on our European model run from last night. And again, look at this. We got some rain and snow breaking out very far south through much of Tennessee come uh, next Wednesday night, uh, seeing some rain and snow on the European model. And then this kind of tries to ride up the coast, and we've got a pretty good snowstorm here going only a week out, even less than that, up kind of the Appalachia chain and through sections of the Northeast and the Ohio River Valley. Uh, and if you go back and look at a lot of my thumbnails from the past week, this is where I've had my bullseye over, kind of the Ohio River Valley, Tennessee River Valley, and up into the Northeast. And the models are really kind of starting to latch onto that. So um, it's still early in the game here, but there's that first storm system. And then again, here comes the second one. Once again, brings snow quite far south in the sections of Tennessee. And then that one as well kind of tries to work its way up the coast here in the 10-day time frame. Um, okay, let's take a look at some snow probabilities here. I love using this map. I think it does a great job. Uh, again, going into this weekend, chance of seeing at least of an inch of snow, um, or I really should say going into early next week, into that Sunday night, Monday time frame, just in time for the ball to drop. Uh, again, could see some good lake effect snow here, I think, or at least a bit of a clipper system that kind of helps out uh, with uh, producing enough lift for some snow in the Midwest. That moves on through, then could bring some snow to the Appalachia chain, especially West Virginia there. And then here comes our next storm system. And look at these snow probabilities increasing, again, quite far south, you know, from Little Rock to Nashville, Knoxville, up through Asheville, uh, and then into the Ohio River Valley. Uh, these chances are not off the charts by any means, but uh, it's noticeable. We definitely have that storm signal there for about next Thursday, around uh, January 4th. Then that one moves up the coast, bringing those snow chances with it, and here comes that next storm. This one, 
um, also bringing those snow probabilities quite far south and up the coast uh, into the northeast before again I think after that we get a little bit of a break around the uh, 10th of January or so with a little bit of warmer air working back in. All right, another map I'll show you. Uh, this is right from uh, the National Weather Service themselves, and they also agree with this general thinking. In fact, they've outlined an area that has the risk, not a forecast that it's going to happen, but a slight risk of uh, some heavy snow into the Appalachia chain from North Carolina all the way up into the interior northeast here on your map. Um, so it's not just me, some crazy, you know, 20 year old. Um, you know, person saying this, it's coming from the experts too. They're seeing the general idea that this could happen uh, going into, again, the time period from January 5th to the 11th, kind of two storm systems in that general time period that we'll watch for uh, as we've talked about throughout this entire video. Alrighty, so again, a lot uh, that we kind of discussed here and uh, we'll continue to monitor the trends and the models here, but again, I think we're getting closer and this idea is becoming a little more um, likely that we see at least one storm system. I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm not saying both of these storm systems are going to be blockbuster crazy snowstorms, uh, but I think at least one of them is going to bring snow to somebody that hasn't seen a lot of snow in a while. And uh, you know, we'll continue to forecast that and I'll give you the latest updates uh, every day here going into the future. With that said, I hope you have a great rest of your Friday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.